So I'm Lynn Kinst. I'm the Executive Director of the Hemophilia Council of California. I want to in, uh, welcome you to our advocacy and public policy webinar today, Navigating Your Care and Treatment, a Medicare Example. Okay. And so why am, I why am I making a big deal about this? Because everyone knows there are benefit gaps, right? You need some sort of protection against these gaps. So you're not stuck with that 20% cost that traditional Medicare has, because everyone also knows that Medicare has a high deductibles and a lot of cost sharing, and there are no cap or cap limits or out of out of pocket costs are not out of pocket costs are not capped for Part A and B and Medicare. In that, they don't also pay for services including long-term care support services, vision, dental, and Hearing still maybe, but we're not sure. We'll have to see what, how Build Back Better comes along. Again, Part D coverage varies, right? It, you still have the donut hole. It may in fact be capped TBD uh, on the Build Back Better uh, thing. But again, these expenses are not capped currently and you still have to pay 25% of the cost of, the, of drugs that are within that gap. Yet, one in five uh, traditional Medicare beneficiaries have no supplemental coverage, meaning they're not enrolled in an Advantage plan, and they don't have any Medigap plan. That is a lot of people. Do not be one of those people, okay? Um, and, and, I mean, whether or not you have um, a private or previous employer-based coverage, whether you have a Medigap plan, whether you have Medicaid or some sort of other union veterans benefits, what have you, you just don't want to be in the red here in this no supplemental coverage where you are, in fact, responsible for paying the remaining 20% of those costs. So when you join traditional Medicare, right, you can pick a supplemental plan or a Medigap plan to help cover these deductibles and co-pays and co-expense, uh, co-insurance. Next slide, please. Now let's go a little bit deeper into what a Medigap plan is and what it isn't, okay? Medigap plan, in order to purchase a Medigap, a Medigap plan, you have to have part A and B. And again, you cannot have an advantage, sli uh, advantage slide, an advantage plan because you can't be in two places at once. Why is this important? Because if you want a Medigap plan, Medicare has only a guaranteed issue, unlike the ACA, which means that you can't charge based on health status, they can't reject you, and those kind of things. So there is no guaranteed access in a Medigap plan after that six months, okay? So once you enroll in Part B, that's when it starts the clock. So you only have guaranteed access, meaning that they can vary. They, can, they have to give you a Medigap plan, and they can't charge you more during that six-month period. OK, uh, on that seven month, they don't have to take you. There is no guarantee. Medigap, pl Medigap plans act to only supplement the original Medicare benefits. That's why it's called the supplemental policy. Again, these are sold by private companies, right? In that it fills the gaps that traditional or original Medicare doesn't pay for. In general, you have to pay the um, premium on a Medigap policy as well as any Part B premiums you still have to pay. So those are two separate payments. Each Medigap plan is standardized, and we'll go through that in the next slide, meaning that they must offer, if it's a type A plan, they're all gonna, all type A plans, whether it's offered through Aetna, United, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, must cover the same basic benefit structure. However, based largely on regional variability, Right, so that if you're in Northern California, if you're in the Bay Area versus LA, your premiums and costs are going to differ. Um, policies in general sold, you know, now 15 years ago, um, did, um, sold after <laughs> sold after 1606 uh, do not have our um, prescription drug coverage. For Rx, for prescription drug coverage, again, you need Part D. And again, these by and large do not include any sort of additional bells and whistles, whether it's silver sneakers, vision, or dental. And again, I cannot stress this enough. It may be difficult to enroll in a Medigap plan if you originally, if you originally 
choose an advantage plan. And that is because you're likely outside of this six month window by which you enroll in after part B. Next slide, please. Okay, and when I was talking about Medigap plans, I was saying that they're standardized, okay? What does that mean? They have letters, that's basically all that it means, right? So that all, all plan A's and offer the same benefits, B's and so forth, okay? And I'm not gonna go into detail about what they do and do not cover because I do not have that, that time. Um, what I wanna say is that if, if, if one thing versus another thing is more important to you, then pay attention to which that covers, right? If you don't care about whether or not it covers travel, you know, then don't worry about whether or not your plan includes travel, okay? Or coverage for travel, right? What I do want to point out is that there are plans that cover 100% of the Part B excess charges, which may be of use to some people in this community, okay? And there are plans that cover 100% of the deductible, okay? But, and there are a couple of plans that now cap their out-of-pocket costs, but these are limited, okay? And those cap on out-of-pocket costs are still quite high in my opinion. So, you know, if you have an out-of-pocket limit of 6,000 or 3,000, I mean, that's kind of re really ridiculously high. So you might wanna reconsider whether or not that is a valuable, um, uh, whatchamacallit, a uh, valuable option for you. I just posted a link to all the supplemental plan um, coverage. Marla, thank you so much. This was super informative and helpful. Um, I want to also thank oh, our... And, oh, go ahead. Sorry, before you thank the sponsor. So you'll send out the open enrollment in California 2022 fact sheet, um, as well as the slide deck, correct? Correct. Because there's yeah. a lot of really great... It has a link to the handbook. It has all these important dates and deadlines and when things start. It gives you a lot of specifics to California about the Medicare savings program and the number of plans offered in your state and what percentage, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, we'll send that out to everyone who registered.